Seattle. The world is taking note. It's drawn to this unfolding story. So where does the story of Seattle start? When did it all begin? In September of 1851, young David Denny, just 19, had been sent ahead by the Denny party to scout Puget Sound. After five treacherous months on the Oregon Trail, he rounded Alki Point and was greeted there by Chief Seattle. The stately chief, flanked by hundreds of tribesmen, was then in his mid-sixties. As these two gazed across the bay, could they have known what Seattle would become? David must have seen something, for he quickly sent word to his party, then waiting in Portland, to come at once. After a harsh winter on Alki, the Denny party literally drove stakes in the ground on the eastern shore of Elliott Bay. That same year, they moved their stakes twice to make room for Doc Maynard's general store and Henry Yesler's state-of-the-art steam-powered sawmill. Four years into their empire building, the 250 villagers already envisioned Seattle's destiny. David Blaine, their first pastor, then expressed the conviction of the founders when he wrote to his brother that Seattle's future would be not unlike New York or London in commercial importance. To support this bold prophecy, he cited the location's natural resources, its climate, its scenery, and its proximity to Asia. From the outset, a spirit of innovation reigned in Seattle. From Yesler's sawmill to the birth of countless new industries, some view this pioneering spirit as rebellion or lawlessness. Others, like the architects of Smith Tower, simply ignore the limits. Not 60 years after the Alki landing, with its audacious decision to construct the tallest building anywhere outside of Manhattan, Seattle was already positioning itself as a commercial rival to New York and London. That same forward-thrusting optimism is displayed in the Space Needle, in hosting the World's Fair, and in today's pioneers in business and industry. Seattle has changed the way the world travels, the way the world shops, the way the world does business, and the way the world builds relationships. Maybe Seattle isn't just a place, but rather a way of thinking, of believing. In this place, innovation has had a constant companion, the spirit of generosity. As one created wealth, the other gave it away. The lead article in Seattle's first newspaper is titled Worth of Money, and it makes the case for generosity over the forces of greed. But then, for centuries, so had the Salish tribes at their potlatch festivals, where a chief would give all his accumulated wealth to those in need. David Denny's extraordinary generosity supplied land for Seattle's first park and its oldest charity. Remarkably, on his original homestead stands the foundation headquarters of a native son, now poised to be the greatest philanthropist in human history. Committed to giving away his riches, he challenges billionaires around the globe to do the same. Generosity is in our soil. 
Seattle's worldwide influence reaches all aspects of life and culture. Even the prayers of nations have been inspired and shaped by a movement conceived in the heart of downtown. Nearly a century ago, one Seattle man recognized the value of convening leaders in business and government for breakfast to humble themselves and pray. He ultimately carried that vision throughout America, all the way to the White House. The world's largest airline calls Seattle a city with momentum. It is moving, expanding. But do we all know the Seattle story? Have we each found our place in the rush of its current? Where is the author of this tale taking us one generation after another? Perhaps Chief Seattle and David Denny really did know.